Hey Tan here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel. So last week I had the opportunity to go to Prague for the official unveiling of the Somnium VR1. A new high-end PC VR headset with every sensor inside poised to arrive this year. And if you remember, I actually previewed a prototype some months ago and it wasn't perfect. So while I started pretty skeptical, I have to say that things actually moved in the right direction. But that's not all because I also had the opportunity to try the next generation merchant in VR with the next generation lenses for next generation headsets, finally bringing huge FOVs to the masses and well Tesla suit the haptic vest able to actually control your muscles, this time fully integrated in Half-Life Alex. Creepy, let's get into it. All right, here we are. So everything happened at Somnium Connect 2024. I have to say that I was expecting it to be a much smaller event because beside the official announcement of the Somnium VR1, there were also different companies presenting their own products like Hypervision with their next generation lenses, Tesla suit, and many, many more. So yeah, the day got very busy and very interesting altogether. Let's start with the headset though, because yeah, I was primarily there for that. As I said at the beginning, I was kind of skeptical when I arrived in there because I didn't know if they were able to deliver all the fixes, the weird things that I saw in December. And I'm happy to report that they fixed pretty much all of those. Just to recap a bit on the Somnium VR1, this is super high-end virtual reality headset. It has very high resolution displays with a resolution of 2880 by 2880 each eye with local dimming running allegedly up to 120 years even if I just tried it at 90 for now, with the option of various cues with different sensors, the in-house eye tracking, mixed reality cameras, and the latest generation ultra lip sensor for eye resolution and tracking. It has three USB 3 Gen 2 ports for your accessories, interchangeable and 3D printable anchor points, and the dual stack spherical lenses. The while they make the headset bulky, they actually provide a very high brightness, very big big eye box, edge to edge clarity and actually very big FOV that I measured personally at 118 degrees horizontal. If you watch my previous video, I'm gonna leave it in the description below by the way so you can check it out, it still like stands for pretty much all the specs because nothing actually changed from there but what I complain about is being pretty much fixed completely. Starting with the comfort is now a bit more balanced because the strap on the top is actually longer so it makes possible to actually bring the part on the back a bit lower, distributing the weight more evenly. It's still front heavy. My demos were around 10-15 minutes each so not enough to actually you know grow a feeling of it but I have to say that it was moving around my face a bit if I wasn't strapping it in completely. So yeah an improvement from the previous prototype version but yeah of course they couldn't just turn it in the beyond like that. I mean they wouldn't be able to fit everything in there anyway. Then when talking about the most important part for me the visuals before I actually saw a lot of chromatic aberration and weird distortion where the word scale were completely off. On top of that there was a weird line in the middle that created some wobbling uh, in the visuals that were very distracting and I have to say that also here they fixed pretty much everything. I'm gonna be honest though here I saw some inconsistency between headsets because the first thing I tried was actually Microsoft Flight Simulator and I saw a lot of chromatic aberration in there and the word scale felt completely off again and my first impression was actually oh but then luckily I tried DCS and Project Cards too and I didn't see chromatic aberration there and the world scale seemed completely fine. So I don't know if it was a problem with Microsoft Flight Simulator or was a problem with that particular unit. So I don't know until I'm gonna have it here. If I ever gonna have it here, I can't really tell you completely, but I have to say that it was a big improvement from the atrocious uh, chromatic aberration that was December. Now when thing got very very cool was actually with the DCS mixed reality demo where they created a cutout of the cockpit in mixed reality so I could see my body, my hand in this completely reproduced cockpit and the sternum part of the canopy was completely VR immersion. This was lined up perfectly so the immersion was out of scale because I could interact with every single button, I could even eject this time 
actually worked and was terrifying, but yeah, I was able to test the mixed reality cameras. In my previous video, I complained about the fact that without sharpening, like it, it was a kind of blurry. So they worked in a house sharpening tool, not using the Nvidia one because it was more resources heavy. And I have to say that the results were absolutely fantastic as I could read every single thing on the knobs without getting too close to them. They still don't have depth correction like the Apple Vision Pro and unlike the Quest 3, but having these two 12 megapixel with big sensor cameras, the low light performance was actually much better than what I was expecting with low graining and not too much blur. I can really wait to see it in daylight. But yeah, this was fixed as well. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test the latest sensor, the ultra leap sensor for the hand tracking like I did last time, so that I don't know if there are gonna be improvements over there, but ultra leap actually arrived with a new version of the software and they already have the latest part of the hardware, so things should just be better than before. And talking about the software, I don't think I was allowed to do that, but let's go with it. This is the front end for the software, it looks very clean, and there are many different options to actually customize your experience, and on top of that, actually said that they have the option to upload custom profiles for the distortion, so if you find some chromatic aberration or things that just feel weird in those lenses, you can fix them yourself. Because I think they are aware, of course, of the limitation of the spherical lenses. That seems to be a technology very prone to create different experiences for different people, because talking that with other people we all have different feedbacks different like experiences even if we were using the exact same headset all the time so as i said my experience was very bad with the demo good with another and very very good with the other ones so honestly i still don't know <laughs> But yeah, the headset improved in every single details it was lacking at. Then the project is of course the same with these spherical lenses. So if you're interested in very high brightness, very high resolution, and you don't mind about a bulkier design, this is very good. But yeah, this is an enthusiast virtual reality headset. So it can be expensive. I mean, it is expensive. But the good thing is kind of modular, so if you don't want some sensors, well, you don't have to have it and you can save some money. And the positive side is also made completely in the European Union. So, you know, no production in China, nothing like that, it's all built in there. This has amazing clarity, amazing eye resolution, eye brightness, great pass through, they listen to the feedback of the community, that is a rare thing to do nowadays, and they built a native PC VR headset that is even more rare. It's expensive and big, but it's a filling, a niche that is kind of missing on the market right now, with very few exceptions. I'm not here to give final views as this is still a second impressions video, as I didn't have enough time with it, but I see it doing very well for business and enterprise, thanks to their no data gathering mantra and European made nature. But the same community should keep an eye on it for sure. It's not a Quest 3 replacement for regular people, and they know it. All right, this got me completely wowed when I tried them, and they were there for a reason, because actually Archer, the creator of Somnium, is actually in talk with them to integrate it in the next headset that they're gonna make, but you know, of course, this is not gonna arrive anytime soon. When this technology is presented, it usually takes like two or three years to actually arrive in production, and Hypervision is still looking for more partners to make this viable. But the demos that were there were absolutely impressive, because these lenses were able to give you very, very wide FOV, up to 160 degrees horizontal and 120 vertical using panels that we have on headsets right now, specifically the one from the Pico 4, a 2160 by 2160 LCD display. So seeing the same display of the Pico 4 with the extra wide FOV to me was completely insane. The particular thing that these were all concave, very similar to what we have on the Apple Vision Pro, and they were also able to keep the profile of the headset very, very small. By the way, side note, I don't know how a company that makes like something like that have the worst website I ever, ever seen, looking like something from 1998. But hey, that's the world we're living in, I guess. The start of the show for me was an older prototype that they had, using actually four screens at the same time, and that one was able to reach 210 degrees horizontal. So 
the entire field of view while still getting 120 vertical. Of course, there were still some weird things happening when moving from a lens to another, but I have to say that the visuals looked absolutely insane. And to be honest, I was already imagining using something like that in simulator to get the complete full speed when you have like everything moving very, very fast on the side. Something that we don't have right now with our headsets because even with 120 degrees of the Somnium VR1 that is considered wide, well, we kind of have this goggle effect with that. But yeah, I'm gonna leave the link to Hypervision in the description below so you can check it out. Uh, for sure it deserves another video by its own, but I tried them for the first time and I really wanted to share with you my excitement because I think that this is gonna be a big step for what is gonna come. Of course, we need more resolution at this point because a 2K display wasn't enough uh, for this very wide FOV and they know that they're actually waiting for higher resolution panels that are big enough to actually you know, cover the entire size that the lenses need, uh, and those are not in production just yet, but you know, the technology is there, everything is ready, and it's super exciting indeed. I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. But the last thing I wanna talk about is actually the Tesla suit. This is absolutely mental, uh, because that's a suit that through electrostatic things can actually control your body. I mean, they can actually move you, take control of your muscles, so it's, absolutely creepy. And when I had some demos in the past where they were actually just moving my muscle, this time I was actually able to use it in game with the Half-Life Alyx to be precise. This is by the way used mostly for medical stuff, so it's not really for gaming. There's not the main thing, but it seems like they're starting to explore it and they were taking feedback on it. And I was sure to give the best feedback ever because I want to see it happening. Even if I'm going to be honest, I'm completely afraid of using it by myself in my studio because if something happens, you're a f exactly. But anyway, after calibration, using it was very, very fun because every time I was shooting, I was actually having a recoil feeling where my hand was moving around. I think the calibration was a bit too high because it was actually hurting to shoot and that should be the person receiving the bullet and that's exactly the thing that they wanted to try and oh boy that thing really hurt i don't know if it was my imagination but i felt different bullets just going through my belly and it was weird it was very weird unfortunately the demo wasn't very long but i have to say that this kind of immersion is completely next level while i will be completely sold on it i also see that you know the danger and the implications of having something like that like not working properly. Uh, it has a lot of power. It can actually hurt uh, if you tune it not correctly. But yeah, great technology, but when I asked them directly, what do they think about actually safety? They said it's better to never use this alone. It's creepy. But anyway, guys, that was all. This was my experience at Somnium Connect, trying different stuff. I'm really happy with what I saw. Big improvements with the VR1. Uh, it's an expensive headset. It's a high-end headset. They know that it's not for everyone, but you know, for that niche that is interested in that, I think it's pretty good. Hypervision was super interesting and Tesla was terrifying. I also tried different stuff like the EV controllers and the Lynx headset. They're gonna have a big announcement soon. But yeah, that was all. Thanks so much for Somnium and Archer, of course, uh, for inviting me. It was amazing to see the team back in action. Uh, also extal to what they're working on. And I have to say that I like that a very open company. They show details about everything. It's something that many don't do. And so for a person that loves tech, loves going into every single detail, just seeing like how big the sensor of the camera is, that is gonna be inside the headset changes everything. So I really appreciate it and thanks for it. But yeah, here we have it guys. I think that the video was longer than I was expecting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Are you actually pre-ordering the VR1? And would you use the Tesla suit at home? Let me know. And as always, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like this, is like. Subscribe to the channel more about VR tech. If you love the channel, join the button there. Let on the further. Also the Patreon. Thanks for the Patreon. So join the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.